Hi everyone, Zoe here. Now for today's video on five mistakes, I am ridiculously excited. I've had a product turn up, a Kickstarter product. Now, I'm no stranger to Kickstarter. I've backed clothing, some tools, a few things around my house, and even some EDC items. I've used Kickstarter a few times. But this is a bit different. This is almost like kickstarting a whole new hobby. Basically, I kickstarted a small blacksmith's forge. Now, it's called the Bullseye Bucket Forge. Why Bucket Forge? Because it can be stored in a small bucket out of the way. It's for people like me. People that have materials, knowledge or confidence to build some of the homemade forge options that are out there, such as the tin can forge I'm sure you've all probably seen. Now, it's made for small apartments, narrow boats, student buildings. It's not going to be able to make whopping great items. It's for small, little craft projects, or in my case, I want to make some tools and turn scrap metal into things I can use. Now, it's made by the guys at Reptile Toolworks, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because I've already mentioned it on this channel before, and if you're an Apocobox subscriber, or you watch the unboxing videos, they make most of the tools and traps that are in Apoca boxes. So, having an idea of the quality of stuff they produce, when I saw the Kickstarter go live, I was really excited about it, and I clicked that button. Turns out, I've heard some slightly conflicting reports about this now, but initially I was told, I am the only person in the world, outside of the U USA, to kickstart this product. And it arrived two weeks ago. Now let's put this into context. I kickstarted a product. I bought a product in advance of it going into production. And it arrived two weeks ago. I have been waiting with this thing in my house for two weeks. Two weeks I have been tripping over this box just for you guys. Because I want to open it on camera. I want you guys to see my initial reactions. So enough of the preamble. Let's open this box and let's build a bullseye bucket forge. And this is the box it came in. It's a Lowe's box, which is a slight novelty for me living here in the UK because we don't have this company. And I thought I'd just take a quick moment to show you a couple of the products that Reptile Toolworks do that I'd hope to replicate one day. This is my personal favorite. This is the Aboriginal Woodworking Toolkit. It's a couple of wooden handles with some basic holes in to secure the blades. And we've got a small selection of them. We've got a small, what they call the Bosen, which is some rasp on the back and a slightly curved blade. As you can see from the size of them, these are small tools, which I hope to be able to do. We've got the awl, which is really great. I've used that loads of times. The beaver tooth chisel. Again, I've used that a fair few times and I really like it. And then we've got the sort of hooked knife, which they call the willow knife, but it's a hooked knife. And the idea is that you can either carry the, these tools in your pocket or attach them to a handle or stick in the wilderness, or because I'm weird, I bought a tool roll for them as well. And one of the other items I've got lying around is this. This is the must, the multi-use survival tool. It's a carbon steel, basically hand blade be attached and reattached to this axe handle and all these are carbon steel or high carbon steel and they also sold an attachment to turn it from this little sort of tomahawk axe into an as so you could basically angle it and use it for making indentations so let's say just a quick shout out to reptile toolworks because i really like these products and they look simple, and they look simplistic, but they really do work, and I love them. So, let's crack into this box, shall we? Right, no more holding off on the excitement any longer. Let's get into this thing. have 
what I assume is packaging material. I don't actually know. So we've got, yeah, basic bubble wrap. I've never seen it in this color before. <laughs> you ever feel like you're being punked? Ways of there we go, Priority Mail US Postal Service. As you can see from the sort of size of my hands, you can get an idea just how small this thing's going to be. And also using an axe head is probably not the easiest way to open a box, but it's what I have lying around. Da -da 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 -da. You ever play the birthday game Pass the Parcel? Because I've already taken out one big box. Oh, Jesus. I think I wasted a ton. Right. <laughs> we even got some of their uh, instant bowstring uses the wrapping material. It's one of the products they make that can be broken down into a sort of high poundage bowstring. So I ain't gonna waste this, I'm gonna cut through this, I'm gonna try and keep this if I can. Well, I'm not sure how much damage the uh, knots will do to it. So, it's almost like it's a demonstration. We'll use the owl to just undo some of these knots if possible. So it under. does not appear to be working. Haha, <laughs> rope puns. Okay, well, not your frame, my, pen, my patience. The worst thing about doing these things on camera is you're always in a bind when it comes to time. Uh -huh, that's one. So I finally got it open, two boxes and two bags. And the first thing that's jumping out at me is an instructions book for some projects to make, including a square awl, a bosun tool, a tanged gorge, and a sax knife. Well, some of those items are included in this Aboriginal woodworking tool pile. So one of my things I wanted to do was replicate those, and some of them I've now got instructions for, which is really helpful. We've got a print out booklet on the assembly. I think we'll be uh, definitely looking at that. And also, that knife might look familiar. It's the Whiskey Burr knife, which is the same knife I used recently. So here's what my money's got me, all laid out nicely. So we've got the actual forge piece of itself, which I assume a laser cut. We've got some insulation wool an extra mounting bracket, a small jewellery anvil, gas line and regulator, gas burner and connecting pipe, some brass fittings, some regular fittings, some tongs, some scrap metal, some sealant and half a fire brick and a full fire brick for more insulation materials. So let's read the instructions and see about putting this together. So. This is our front plate, and our first instruction is to bend this and this towards you, the camera. Now it says a 200 pound gorilla would be able to do it. Well, I ain't a 200 pound gorilla. And that is a little bit painful to attempt to do. But on the plus side, it is moving slightly as I brace the palm of my hand against it. So let's bend that a bit flatter and then we'll try with this section. Whew. Who needs a 200 pound gorilla when you got a Zoe? So that's one bend done. Next we have to put this 
outwards too. And to try and accomplish that, I'm going to use the incredible professional vice-like power of my foot. Power of the big Zoe boot for the win. So, that's stage one done. So, for better illustrative purposes for you guys, here's the back plate. And what's going to be required is this section here. We're supposed to clamp that to be able to bend it outwards. Because that comes outwards, so are these two tabs and this bottom one. But I don't have vice. So let's see how ingenious I can be at doing this without a clamp. Applies first. So it's not the straightest edge in the world but we've got an edge. Now, to bend these two side tabs back, we'll do the same thing. And these don't have to be completely flush because that's where the back is gonna slide on. So there's one, which is the second one as well. Second one's a lot harder to get to actually. So we go, there's the second one, and then we've got the bottom. Do we have 200 pound gorilla strength time? So, for illustrative purposes for you guys only, here's a top plate. And what they're talking about is basically getting rid of one of these two sections. Now, me, I'm predominantly right-handed. So I want that area to be where my tools are, or where the metal's gonna go, or the anvil's gonna go. So I'm gonna be knocking out the left-hand side, because presumably the gas bottle's gonna be going to the left of the stove, which gives me my predominant hand area free to work with. So, let's get this bit out. So one of the weirder tools I'm going to be using is these. I use these to uh, pull up my eyebrows. But they're essentially some very needle nose pliers. As you can see, give me just enough clearance to do what I need to do. Nice little medallion there for afterwards. So. There's the home for our uh, gas line. While I'm still here, this is the top, and the next job is to bend this down and this down about 30 degrees. Um, I'm supposed to use a clamp, a sort of a solid straight edge to apply pressure against to manipulate, but I ain't got one of those that I can put in a vise. So I'm going to have to try and fabricate this one a little. Try that again. I've got this weird clamp plate. We're not flat anymore, either, which can make things a bit difficult. Oh. And our anvil. Just to the side. 
do some adjusting. Let's give that a go. Step four, the sides. The sides are identical, but not symmetrical. The front of the forge has two tabs while the rear has three. And they all need bending. The middle one is more than 90 degrees. The outer tabs to about 45 degrees. Using the anvil, shaped object and hammer makes this easy. So we're bending middle tabs and top tabs. And we've got to make sure we bend in the right direction or else it causes problems. Hmm. And then the more than 90 degree one is really confusing and involves talking about the horn on the anvil. Hmm. Tackle that when we come to it. So, like any good meal, let's get some good sides. Right, now we have the second to last piece, the bottom. And according to the book, which I shall read to you guys, we like to put the bottom on first, as the tabs get bent all the way over. Make sure all the side tabs are angled as in the picture, then hammer those tabs down. There's the picture. The anvil, shaped object, turned on its horn, it's perfectly sized to flatten the tabs against the bottom. So, looks like we're actually going to make some construction using the sides and the bottom. Let's give that a go. Now I'm not sure that showed everyone on camera because I was doing it in the hallway, but this is what I've ended up with. Got two sides, attach the bottom by bending these tabs. And the next job we've got to do, while I hold that precariously, is apply the top, which is going to tab on to here and here. And it recommends using the bit of metal to just ease it down the tabs. So, let's give that a go. Now we're probably going to bend these back a little bit. So that makes it a little bit easier. So that was easy. But then we've got the pressure of this coming all the way across there. Which is going to be hmm, not as difficult as I thought. So, there's the basics, there's the top, sides obviously, and bottom. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably have to hammer these in, but we'll see. Right, next job is to take the back piece and slide it into this assembly we've made. Which says a bit of hammering may be required, but we've got to slide it behind these tabs. I apologise for the noise. go. Right, the next step is hammering down these tabs at the top. 
and the reason they had us put the back on was so there was a bit more rigidity while we do it. job is to take the front piece and slide that in. There we go. That's an idea of what it's going to look like fully assembled. When it comes to size wise, there's my hand. As you can see, it's only a little bit bigger than my hand. Right. Let's continue with the construction. Now the next thing I'm going to install on this is this. Our burner mount. It's basically a piece of pipe that's been welded to a plate. Remember that tiny hole we took out earlier? That's where this goes. We're going to screw it onto there. Tighten those up and we're done. Right, time for our final piece, the back door, everybody's favourite. Now for this one, we're bending these 90 degrees towards me and we're bending the bottom 90 degrees towards you. According to the instructions, it's bent that way so it acts as a shelf, so some more insulation travels up as we take it out. So, let's get it on the anvil and do these turns. There we go, we've got our edge to go on the inside that we can pull our insulation from and our tabs just be able to grab it and pull it up on the outside. Right, next step of supplying insulation. I'm going to use a some mask, I've got this killer wool stuff. It just says to apply by putting the bottom part in and then wrapping the rest round. So, Mm -hmm. 
access to these gloves, which I'm quietly doing. Obviously, for this thing, section, I have to move the front, just so I can get into it. There we go. Also came with another piece, and according to the instructions, after the long piece of carol wool or whatever, it's placed in a thick small piece and tuck it tightly into the top back, making sure there's about an inch at the bottom so the door will be able to open. So it'll be that way. Now the final step in this initial construction is on this mysterious bag. Of bizarre powder, which the instructions refer to as I know it's a sealant. S-A-T-A-N-I-T-E Satinite? Satinite. Possibly. As with caribou, wear gloves and a mask. Your first step is to pour about half the bag into a bowl you don't mind using. It actually says bow, got a misspelling. Then add a little water at a time, it has a cake batter-like consistency. Make sure to mix it thoroughly. And essentially using a paintbrush, we're going to be plastering it all over the inside. So, let's mix some of this. So, instructions call for half a bag of this stuff mixed with water. Roughly half a bag, we're going to run a bit of spilt on the t shirt. We're mixing to a cake like consistency, burning a little bit of water apparently. We've got one of the greatest British things ever chip fork, and we're just going to mix it. Probably a little bit watery. paintbrush and we're just going to coat the inside.
Right, there we go. All I've done is set it up and put that fire brick in. And I've used some of the leftover sealant just to colour match it basically because I felt it looked nice. So, we'll give that up to 48 hours to dry. So there we go. It's been over 48 hours. I've let the sealant dry. One thing I've noticed, I don't know if the camera's going to be able to show this very well or not. You guys positioned. Is the actual texture is a little bit spongy. You see how it's moving underneath my finger? So, one of the things I'm going to do is probably overkill, and this is where the sort of instructions for this end, because the instructions literally say hook up the gas, it'll dry out some more, and there you go, hey presto, you're done. Well, I've got some fire cement left over from another video project. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick layer with the fire cement, just to be doubly sure. It probably is overkill, but I wanted this thing to be the most practical and effective that it could possibly be. There we go, that's the inside lined with that fire cement. I'm going to leave that time to dry and we'll go and have a look at the uh, gas connectors. So let's actually look at the gas components of this build. Well, the first one we've got is the actual burner itself, which is just a simple brass piece for the airflow to come out of, which will withstand the heat. As you see, that screws on to this gas hose. So this is obviously a braided hose for a bit more protection. So that's our gas. And then we've got this side, which goes to our gas bottle. It's got a small regulator on it, that it attached with this brass adapter. So that'll screw on there and go to our propane bottle. Then when it comes to the actual forge side of things, we have this very simple looking pipe. That's for our airflow to come in. There's a small hole on top that the burner fits into. And then that whole assembly just drops into the forge. Right, let's connect this end up to a gas bottle. So this is actually my first time owning a gas canister this big, but it's kind of self-explanatory. Here's your on-off valve, here's where the gas comes out of. And all we've got to do is connect it up to our little regulator. So it should be a simple case of the thread screwing together. Well, that's a female thread, that's a female thread. So Reptile Toolworks is an American company, so we probably don't need this adapter. It'll probably just screw here, it's got threads. Imperial metric. Let's get an Imperial to metric adapter. So we're a couple of weeks later and we've gone from this American fitting and I managed to hunt down an Imperial to metric one so it'll fit my gas bottle. Now I got a bit confused because the second to last page in our instructions, page 41 and 44, is talking about sealing the insulation. And the final page is literally about it drying and running the stove to make sure it's completely dry. There's nothing about setting up the gas supply, it's all about just the construction of the forge itself. And I don't work with gas. So there's actually a Facebook group for people who bought this stove and they actually posted a video of how to set up the gas supply, but I didn't know anything about this at the time. So I posted a message saying, need a bit of help, anyone got any advice? And I got a message back, a guy from I shall check. Guy from Wisconsin messaged me back. It's called Stumpy Harris. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, Stumpy. We exchanged PMs, we exchanged a few messages. He said me he set up, he gave me a bit of advice, and even looked online for this Imperial to Metric converter for me. And that's really appreciative. And I asked for his permission to thank him on this video. 
He said, yeah, by all means. I said, oh, what position do you hold in Reptile Toolworks? So I can just thank you personally. And I don't hold any position in Reptile Toolworks. He's not an employee of the people that made the forge. He's another person who bought one just like me. So for going that extra mile and posing for these kick-ass pictures, Stumpy, thank you very much. Now, let's uh, finally convert our Imperial to metric, or metric to Imperial, and let's see how this gas supply fits in the forge. Narrow side of our adapter and screw it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we connect that. To our fuel hose. Make sure that's good and tight. And there we go. Alright, let's get this started. You hear that gas coming through? Right, as you can see it's burning, now it's just a case of finding the right adjustments between the height of this pipe, it's very hot, gas inlet and fuel intake. That's the kind of noise I'm after. Bucket Forge, a kick-started blacksmith forge from Reptile Toolworks. Now, if you want more survival mistakes footage, please consider liking the video. It lets me know how well I'm doing. There's also a Facebook group called Survival Mistakes where you can chat to me or other people with the Survival Mistakes community. You get some really good bushcrafters and some really interesting people on there at the minute. And I'm also on Twitter as at Zoe Survival, which is usually where I share pictures of projects I'm already doing or projects I've just finished. So if you want a bit of a sneak peek of what's coming up next, check out the Twitter feed. So, I'm really hoping this forge will turn up in future videos, we'll make some projects, we'll have some fun, but until then, I've got nothing more to say apart from what I say at the end of every video. Thank you very much for watching, and get out there and do the impossible every day.